Okay, section 6.2, integration by substitution. Okay, this video lecture is going to be a shorter one than the other one, which I only suggest for those of you that are pretty comfortable with U sub, and if you think you might need some more examples and sort of a more thorough review over it, then please, please watch the other one, okay? So tangent integral of tangent squared x over 2 dx, we are going to first let u equal to x over 2. So du equals to 1 half dx. Now notice we don't have a 1 half dx in our problem, so we're going to multiply the 2 over to the other side to have a 2 du equals to dx. So dx is going to be replaced by a 2 du, and the x over 2 is going to be replaced by the u. So we're going to have the integral of tangent squared u, and I'm going to put the 2 in the front and the du over here. Now how do we integrate a tangent squared? It's not a secant because the derivative of a tangent is secant squared. That often gets um, mixed up by students who aren't really careful. On this particular one, we are going to have to use the Pythagorean identity and rewrite tangent squared u as secant squared u minus 1. And if you don't remember this, you're going to get stuck. So try to remember that whenever you see an integral of a tangent squared, you replace it with a secant squared minus 1. So now we can actually integrate this because the integral of a secant squared is a tangent and the integral of 1 is u, du. So then we back substitute to finalize our answer, which is 2 tangent x over 2 minus 2u, and u is an x over 2, so I'm actually going to write this as 2 tangent x over 2 minus x. And please make sure you don't forget your plus c. Now the plus c needs to show up the second you are done integrating. So we do not want to leave off the constant on this second to the last line and suddenly throw it in on the last line. It needs to appear the second you integrate. All right, let's try another problem. integral of cosecant squared x cotangent x dx. Now I'd like for you guys to stop and think about this for a second before I start on it. What do you want to use as your substitution? We can think of this as cosecant x times cosecant x, cotangent x, but what should our choice for u be? Now some of you guys might be thinking, okay, let's let u equal to cotangent x, because the derivative of cotangent x is a negative cosecant, oops, hard to see the negative, negative cosecant squared x dx. Now some others, of you guys may be thinking u could be cosecant x because du will be negative cosecant x cotangent x. I'd like for you to try one of these as I work on both of them. Okay, so let's see how this plays out. If we use the one here on the left, u equals to cotangent x, then that means when I make my u substitution, I get negative integral of u du. So that's going to be negative one-half u squared plus c, and then I have negative one-half cotangent squared x plus c after I back substitute. Okay, now let's go over here on the right-hand side and do this one. If I let u equal to cosecant x, then I'm going to have negative integral of u du as well, and I'll have negative one-half u squared plus c 
but when I back substitute, my u was something different. I have a one, negative one-half cosecant squared x plus c instead. I have two completely different answers. Which one of them is right? Well, the answer to this question is that they are both right. But how could that be? There should only be one answer, right? Well, this all hinges upon this constant that we have. I know I labeled them both c's, but c is not necessarily the same from one problem to the next. So because those constants are different, it's a it actually hides the fact that we actually used a Pythagorean identity. Okay, so most of you guys I know remember sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1, but you should also remember 1 plus cotangent squared x equals 2 cosecant squared x. So because of that, what we can do is substitute in 1 plus cotangent squared x in for this cosecant squared x here on the right hand side, and let's see what happens. If I write in 1 plus cotangent squared x, I get a negative 1 half minus 1 half cotangent squared x plus c, and if I combine the negative 1 half with my constant c, I really get some other new variable d, and now these two are the same, where the c on this problem on the left, or the solution on the left, is actually the same as this constant d for the solution written on the right hand side. So be aware, your answers may look a little bit different for some of the trig ones, doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Let's try a few more. Integral of sine squared pi x over 2 dx. So let's let u equal to pi x over 2. That makes du equal to pi over 2 dx, and dx equals to 2 over pi du. So I'm going to put that in for my dx. It's a constant, so I'm going to go ahead and just write it out in the front. 2 over pi integral of sine squared u du. Now do you guys remember how to integrate a sine squared? This one is going to require that you guys use the double angle formula for cosines. Now I know many of you guys don't remember that, so let me help refresh your memory. Okay, cosine 2u equals to cosine squared minus sine squared. That's probably the one you remember from trig. Now it also equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared u, and it also equals to 2 cosine squared u minus 1. How did I get these? I used the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals to 1, and substitute it in. Okay, so you guys need to know these. Okay, the first one is usually the easiest one to remember, but that's not actually the one that we'll be utilizing in our substitution here. I need to use the second one that I've written out. Because I have a sine squared that I'm trying to integrate, I'm going to use the second one. Cosine 2u equals to 1 minus 2, cos, 2 sine squared u. So sort of rearranging things, I get 2 sine squared u equals to 1 minus cosine 2u. Dividing everything by 2, I get 1 minus cosine 2u all over 2. That is going to get substituted in for my sine squared u. And there is no other way for you to be able to integrate a sine squared u without performing this substitution. So really, really important, guys. Make sure you know this. The 2 and the 1 half are going to cancel out nicely. So all I'm going to have left is a 1 over pi on the outside and the 1 minus cosine 2u du left to integrate. So integral of 1 is nice, that's a u. Oops. Integral of 1 with respect to u is a u minus, and the integral of a cosine 2u is going to be a sine 2u, but we have the chain rule, so I have to put a 1 half in the front of this. 
So it'll be 1 half sine 2u plus my constant c. And then I'm going to back substitute since u equal to pi x over 2, I have 1 over pi times pi x over 2 minus 1 half sine 2 times pi x over 2 plus c. And I can simplify this a little bit. I can make this x over 2 minus 1 over 2 pi sine pi x plus c. If you want to leave the 1 over pi on the outside, that's fine, but you should at the very least simplify your 2 and your 1 half in your sine function. Okay, so you need to be able to integrate sine squared u or sine squared x by doing this substitution. Similarly, you should also be able to integrate a cosine squared by using the third equation up here, doing a similar substitution, but it will be a 1 plus cosine 2u over 2. All right, before we do the integration, we're going to actually also solve by separating the variables. So this is going to involve integration with this u substitution, but I want to see if you guys can separate the variables properly on this problem. Okay, when we separate the variables, we talked about that a few days ago, that's the one where you got to put the x's on one side and the y's on the other. So I'm going to write this out as dy over square root of y cosine squared square root of y equals to x dx. I'm going to let u equal to the square root of y, so this is going to be 1 over 2 square root of y dy. And I'm going to multiply the 2 over because I have a dy over square root of y right here that's going to be my du or 2 du. 2 du over cosine squared u, and that's going to equal x dx. Some of you guys may want to rewrite the cosine squared u in the denominator as a secant squared u, or if you already recognize that and realize that that's just going to be tangent, that's okay too. So this is going to be a tangent, 2 tangent u, equals to 1 half x squared plus c. Now notice I'm only writing one constant here. I do technically have one on the left hand side and one on the right hand side, but I'm just going to write it once. So this is really 2 tan squared of y equals to 1 half x squared plus c, and I want to solve for y. So we're going to do a little manipulation here. I'm going to divide everything by 2, but notice I actually have to divide this constant by 2, so I can't actually call it c anymore. I could call it c sub 0, c sub 1, or in this case I'm going to go ahead and call it a whole other letter d. Now i got to get rid of the tangent. How do we do that? That's going to be arctan or inverse tan. And this whole thing in here, 1 fourth x squared plus d, gets put into my inverse tan, and then I need to square everything. So the whole quantity gets squared. So that's how we separated the variables and used a u substitution. All right, one last one, and this is really just to try to remind you guys of how to do this integral. You guys remember what the integral of a tangent, oops, tangent x Do you guys remember what the integral of tangent x dx is equal to? Might be helpful. 
it might be helpful for you guys to write this out as sine x over cosine x and then think about your u substitution. Let's let u equal to cosine x, so du equals to negative sine x dx. So sine x dx is going to be our du. I'm going to write this out as negative the integral of 1 over u du. That gives me negative natural log of u plus c, which is negative natural log of cosine x plus c. And this technically has absolute values over it because we don't know that the u is going to be positive or that the cosine x is going to be positive. So we actually should throw absolute values over that. And this is our answer, although sometimes some of you guys may see this as ln of the absolute value of secant x. So try and think about why these two are the same. Again, properties of logs.